So uh, what was getting to break the rock like, and then also hearing Coach Norvell said it was the players that actually came to him and, and recommended he do that. He was thinking, he was originally thinking about going to a player. Yeah, you know, a after games and wins, usually, you know, Mike comes to me and we kind of quickly, hey, who, who do you want? You know, type thing, and he's got somebody in mind on offense or special teams, and usually I give him one or two guys, and then um, whatever decision he makes, you know, the guy goes and breaks it. So, you know, when he called my name, obviously it was a little bit of a shock to me, but it, listen, it's all, it's a team thing, right? And somebody's got to break it. Um, but to hear that the players wanted it, I can't tell you what that feels like. You know, that's a, uh, that's a moment that you, you're super proud of, and um, it's kind of not why you coach, but it's all part of the impact, you know what I mean? And to hear after a big win, because it could have been three or four or five different players, you know? So uh, hopefully the players saw it as I was the ability to represent them in that moment. So, you know, it was definitely something that was cool. Did you, did you expect to be able to get as much pressure on the quarterback as you guys were able to do in the first half? Um, you know, expect, you know, I don't know. We had a really good sense of what the protection was going to be, you know, so we knew who would be matched up and the guys that were matched up knew who were coming to block them. And so when you have really good players and they know what's going to happen, usually they do really well. And, um, you know, th that's how it played out. And, um, you know, I, listen, we put a lot of time into recruiting and development of that front. Um, and we got to continue to keep building it, but the production is there right now. Uh, Mike was talking about uh, early last week, there was a, I don't know if it was a similar play, but Akeem had a chance in two minute drill in practice to, to pick one off and instead it kind of bounced off his hands and went for a, for a big gain. That kid making that play in that moment, what, what could that do for his career here and also just uh, his confidence to go make a play like that uh, moving forward. Yeah, the, I mean, it did happen in practice. You know, it was a two-minute drill, and we had him on a third and long, and, you know, he went up, ball bounced off his hands in a similar, similar type of ball. Um, so, listen, you never – around here, we don't want to make too much of one moment, right, because it's all, all those small moments that lead up to that that help you make the play. Uh, but I don't want to be naive to think in a game, in a critical fourth quarter, fourth down play – I mean, that shows some guts, it shows some character, it shows finish, um, and that's kind of what we're about, and you know, it's good to see that's what Akeem's about. And to see that finish, I know it made him feel really excited. Um, I know our guys are excited for him, and that'll breed more confidence. I'm just excited to watch him go to work this week because I think now it will build confidence. Uh, will it help him catch the next ball? I sure hope so. Kalen and the play he made on the safety, how much is that a factor of how much he's played this year? And I guess just what can you speak to about his growth from kind of the huge role he's been thrown into? Well, Kalen will be the first to tell you. I mean, part of the reason that he makes that play is because of the D-line's pressure and Jermaine's pressure. I mean, the, it's a screen, right? So, you know, they're going to set and the ball is going to get off anyways. But for Jermaine to get in his face and get his left arm extended high, you know, pours a little bit of loft on the throw and now the linemen have, you know, Kind of, they lose Kalen in the play, but like Kalen, I've said, he, he's played really well. I think he, he's getting better. Um, that's a sign of development, you know, when guys can, it's engagement, it's development. Um, so, you know, I, I think, I still think the best is yet to come with Kalen Deloche. You know, um, you know, this is his first year as an inside linebacker. We're investing a lot of snaps, and he's cashing out on those snaps right now, and he's, he's, he's one of our most productive defensive players. Uh, how did Jarquez? I know Jarquez has played, um, but but not that quite that much. How did he do overall? He did well. You know, there were some things you know throughout the course of the game where you know, you prepare to play, but when it becomes 70 snaps, you know, you start to see all the reps during the week that maybe you know he wasn't as prepared as as he would have liked or I would have liked him. So there was some coaching in between series of I pack. This is what we said was going to happen. This is how we got to react to it. And, but he's super, he's a pleaser, and he wants to do well. He's a super team guy. He loves the school. He loves the program. Um, and just to have him be able to eat up all those reps for us in, in a winning game was important for our growth. Um, we have invested time into him. He's played a lot, 
but it de definitely didn't play that significant of a role as he did on Saturday out there in Boston. So, um, you know, he finished the game well. He made his tackles. Um, you know, the ball didn't find him very much. Um, but, you know, as the game moved on, his comfortability went up and up. When they originally um, instituted the targeting rule, uh, the talk was to try to keep launching and hit high hits. Does it feel like um, maybe quarterback sliding late makes it almost unavoidable sometimes for, and, and how do you coach Jamie on a play like that? Yeah, that's a good question. Right, listen, I'm for all the safety in the sport. I mean, we got big, strong, fast people running full speed and there's collisions. And so, you know, I support all the rules we're trying to do to make this thing um, as safe as possible. Um, but there are more challenging situations than others. You know, I think every defensive player in the country always looks at every target and says, what am I supposed to do? You know, and as a coach, you then lead up with, well, this is what you're supposed to do. I think the worst thing you do as a coach is to throw your hands up and say, I don't know what you're supposed to do there. Because how do you coach them? How do you play? Right? So that's never been my response. And, you know, listen, there's last second slides, but he's a quarterback. And that's kind of the way you've got to deal with it. I think quarterbacks have the upper hand in the open field right now. You know, and if they want to take advantage of it, they can. Um, but the rules are the rules. We have to play by the rules. We have to understand how it's being officiated and then operate within the rules to the best of our ability. So, um, you know, it's a penalty. We lose one of our better players for the game. Um, and I coached him on how we, how we would do it again if that showed up again. So there's certain things that you can't do in the open field on a quarterback. And um, it happened, and he had to sit out the rest of the game because of it. I have two quick questions. First, on the targeting, I uh, asked Coach Norvell this too, but uh, could, is there something that can be done in the offseason as, as coaches? Because it doesn't seem like many coaches like the ejection, like auto ejection. Is that something that can be looked into that there could be a, I don't know if you can hire a lobby firm or something to get that change where if the intent isn't there, maybe a kid doesn't have to miss three and a half quarters of a really important game when a kid, when he just kind of slid yeah. into a helmet. I think, Court, you're speaking. I think the entire country understands that offensive, defensive, like nobody wants to have a kid leave the game, especially when the intent isn't there. The problem with the word intent is the word intent, right? Like what was the intent? Now you're judging by the actions and you're judging what you thought the intent was. So, you know, it's a difficult, listen, the officials have a tough job. Um, you know, everybody's got a role in a game and, you know, it's just, I think we've made a lot of strides in this sport, right? And to make it, as fast and as enjoyable for everybody as possible and as safe for the players. So I think you, we just got to trust how we built this thing um, in college football. And we, we've got to, you know, just when the season ends, you know, if the numbers are up, why? And just kind of take a good hard look at it and not be afraid of change. And, and when you're going into this game, when, uh, when, the, when the head coach and, you know, I don't know how much he's calling plays, but it's his offense, isn't there anymore. Do you, I mean, it's just one game left, so do you assume you're going to see basically the same thing? Does it make it harder to prepare when you yeah. don't necessarily know much about the play caller or who's calling plays? Yeah, I try to never assume anything, to be honest with you. And when we start out on Sunday night, you know, the, the, the game's are already broken down. And so now I have all this information that you're dealing with. But part of the information is, you know, Cortez Carter, who's been with me for a while, and, you know, he's always gone back and whoever – I've coached against, we use that information, whether it was at Florida State, whether it was at past places. Um, so who the play caller is always plays a part into your plan, right? Um, because even if they haven't done certain things that year, but they didn't get you in the past, you're always evaluating those, get the best plan for your current players. So, um, you know, it is part of the evaluation, but at the end of the day, it's still the players on the field. It's still the 11 games that they played. You have a bunch of information from this year, and we're just going to put the plan together with the information that we have at hand that we know. And, um, you know, we'll go through that process this week. Uh, Akeem has had some highs and lows um, and has seen his, you know, was out of the starting lineup for a little bit. How did he respond to that? And also, you know, he had a, that patch where he was missing a lot of tackles, and it's the last couple of weeks that's kind of gone away. How has he responded to what he was going through? Yeah, good, good, good observation by you, Ira. I mean, he started early in the season, and listen, I, I don't want to go backwards, but I mean, we started nine safeties last year. You know, we've cut that number in half this year. Uh, thank goodness. And now, you know, Akeem started 
got dinged up a little bit, and then Sidney was playing better, so his reps got cut, and Sidney went down, and now Akeem got a resurgence. And I think to you see the game that he played, you see him to finish, so I think that says everything about how he's responded, right? Because he wouldn't be doing that if he wasn't doing it out there Sunday through Friday for us. We wouldn't put him out there. So, I mean, he has responded. He's grown up a lot. And how do you get better at tackling? You work at it. And we've been out there in one-on-one, -on, -one, on sled work, on ring work, on open field tackle work. And, you know, it's just if, if you see a problem as a coach, you fix it. And, but it does take intent from the player. He's got to want to fix it. And Akeem has done that. Um, and you guys will even see his body language when he doesn't, even when he makes tackles, but they're not done the right way. You know, you'll see him get down on himself. We're trying to help him with that too. But uh, he has come a long way. And um, I'm excited about the progress he's made since we made the move to put him back at safety. What's been the sort of genesis of the, the fourth quarter defense sort of, I don't know, firming up a bit? You know, you guys did all you could against Clemson. Miami, you, you forced that three and out to get the ball back after the field goal. Uh, you guys did everything you could against Boston Colleges. Is it, is it as much mental as it is the physical execution of having that sort of mindset of, of wanting to be out there and have the game in your guys' hands? I think it's all of it. You know, it's physical, it's mental. Um, it goes back to preparation, you know, and we try to make everything we do real, you know, in the, in the practice situations. Um, you know, you can put pressure on your players in meetings. You can put pressure on your players in, in individual, in practice. And that doesn't mean it's a negative connotation. That's just trying to make it as real as possible so when the moment happens, they're, it's not too big for them. They feel like they've been there before. Um, and I think that's what you do in a good program when you practice the right way. You know, they feel like they've been there before. And when that happens, there's no panic. And you go back to your training and, and you get execution. And uh, listen, we don't want to give up any points. So none of it was OK. But to get some critical stops when you need it, we've been best this year when our back's been against the wall, whether it's red zone or sudden changes or critical stops on fourth quarter. Um, we like to operate that like that for all 60 minutes all the time. Um, but we're not there yet. But we're fighting to be there. All right, last one, Ira. Florida runs the ball well, um, but they also get a lot of run running out of their quarterbacks. Um, how much of that is? designed and how much of that is those guys improvising? Designed. You know, I, I think we've had a lot of quarterbacks this year that have kind of ab-libbed and had scramble yards. I don't want to say, I, want, I don't want to give a percentage on the number of yardage they've gained on scrambles as opposed to call plays, but definitely feels like they've been designed, called quarterback runs or RPO design where if he goes out, I take the vertical seam, you know, things like that. Uh, very less, you know, when they've dropped back to throw the ball, They've had open players. They've schemed things up well to get guys one-on-ones, get open players, and the ball comes out pretty good. Um, so when they've been in drop back, for the most part, it's been throw game. Uh, but there's been enough in a lot of design runs or design RPOs based off this than that. That was good. Turkey or ham for Thanksgiving? Is that what, Jerkovich, a quarterback for no, BC? No, turkey or ham, coach. Thanksgiving, it's Thanksgiving week. When? Thursday's Thanksgiving. Got it. Turkey or ham at the Fuller household? Whatever, whatever my wife Hope makes. But I'm, I'm assuming turkey. What else goes on I your plate? I said I don't assume things, but there we go. Yeah. What else you put on your plate besides turkey? What side oh, dish? Goodness, Aslan. Come on, coach. I have no idea. It's the holidays. Whatever she makes. Like, I don't know. All right, finish. But it'll be really good. Do you want to come over? No, no. Okay. I mean, sure. Last one. Finish the sentence. My, <laughs> wife, my wife makes the best Thanksgiving. Oh, say it again. Complete the sentence. Okay. My wife makes the best Thanksgiving. Correct. Oh. Love you guys.